Lesson 18.1, Lewis Acids and Bases. Now, a Lewis Acid is defined as a substance that accepts an electron pair. Uh, so I still like to think of this as something that releases H's, H pluses. So if it releases H pluses, what's been left behind is two electrons. So that's how I remember it. Uh, let's say with chlorine. Uh, so it's left behind an electron. I just draw a Lewis structure here. And same with the Lewis base. Well, a Lewis base donates an electron pair. So I, I still think of, I still like to think of the OH minuses. Uh, if the OH minuses come off, let's say that's lithium. All right, so lithium hydroxide's a base. This one's come off. Uh, and so an electron has been uh, allowed to release. So that's how I remember how which one accepts and which one donates an electron pair. Uh, you also need to know which one's a nucleophile, so which one's attracted to a positive nucleus, and which one's an electrophile. Uh, so this would be an electrophile because it's positive, so it's attracted to negative. And the base there, uh, because that's negative, that would be attracted to positive. So that there is a nucleophile. So I'll just write those ones in there. electrophile and nucleophile. So that's how I remember which one's which. Now here is an example of how Lewis acids and bases are more powerful than the previous Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry theories. Here you have a free electron pair and this is an exception to the octet rule because it's boron has a very small nucleus and so it doesn't have a full octet but it has places where this electro uh, electron pair can join up. So here we have a free electron pair, so that there is an electron pair donator, so that there would now be classified as the base, and it's also a nucleophile that's attracted to the nucleus, and this boron here has been attracted to this electron pair. Uh, and so it's also accepted that electron pair. So we can draw a dative covalent bond in here and that makes that one the acid for those reasons. Again, here's the terminology for a hydronium ion. Now again, this, is, this allows us to better describe acids and bases than the Bronsted-Lowry theory. What we have here is a free electron pair. Now that is being attracted to this uh, hyd hydrogen ion, so there we get our dative covalent uh, coordinate bond. Okay, now we also have this here uh, that is accepting an electron pair, and it is also, and, and hence it is also an electrophile uh, that qualifies it for an acid. Now, this here, this here is donating. The electron pair and so it is also a nucleophile. Please note also with this example because it is also a proton donor and a proton acceptor uh, you would also give this a tick as a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. Whereas if you look at the previous one uh, this is the best example for a Lewis acid and base because you can differentiate it from a Bronsted-Lowry Bronsted acid and base because no protons are being accepted or donated. This picture here is just showing you where the dative uh, coordinate bond is. So you can see it forms over here and as the previous example it forms over here. So in both cases this here is the Lewis, the Lewis base here, here and here. Okay, make sure you always draw if you're drawing your Lewis diagram to do the square boxes if it's got a charge on it too. Lastly, an, ex an organic example here. Uh, this is hemoglobin, so it combined with oxygen and hopefully not get poisoned by CO2, although it does react with that of course, better than oxygen. The iron, the iron iron is positive, so by its, its very nature, if it's positive, it's going to be an electrophile and it's going, to an ex it's going to accept the electron pair from the oxygen or the carbon monoxide. Okay, so that would make that 
an acid, a Lewis acid. Now, because the electron pairs here are being donated, and hence it is a nucleophile, these things here will join on here and be called the Lewis bases. So they're the key terms and the way you need to think about it in order to answer questions for Lewis acids and compare them, Lewis acids and bases, and compare them with Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases.